Okay, so we're still looking at solving these proportional relationships, um, but there's a couple, there's a different method that we're going to use. And so instead of using proportions like we did yesterday, today we're going to look at using equa an equation to answer these questions. So the first term that you need to get that you're going to see quite a bit over the next, well, over the rest of the year is called constant of proportionality. Constant of proportionality. And it is the rate at which a constant ratio is changing. But the important thing that you need to remember about constant of proportionality, underline this sentence, put stars beside it, something that makes it stick out. It is the same thing as the unit rate. So whenever you hear constant of proportionality, I want you to automatically think unit rate. So constant of proportionality, it is the same thing as the unit rate. We find it the same way, we divide those two, um, and we get one at the bottom. That's what we're looking for with that. Direct variation equation. So these types of questions that we're going to be answering today are called direct variation questions. And so it's in the form y equals kx. And k, so y and x will always be variables. You just have one number in this equation, and that is what k is. K is the constant of proportionality, or K is the unit rate. So we're going to be finding the unit rate, and then we just plug it in for K. So instead of Y equals KX, if the unit rate is 2, we would say the equation is Y equals 2X, or Y equals 5X. So that's what those equations will look like. And it won't always be Y and X, but it'll still be two different letters, and the letters could represent anything that we're trying to find. A lot of times we use letters that go with like M for money or H for hours. We'll use those instead of just Y and X. But that's the form of the equation we're gonna be working with. And I would say today, solving these types of questions, you're probably gonna find out that it's a lot easier to set up the equation than it is the proportion. And so you might wanna be using this as you solve these, but um, that's up for you to decide. But these are the three steps that we will um, use in solving these equations. <clears throat> Number one, find the unit rate. Find the unit rate. We know how to do that. We did that for a couple weeks now. And then we're going to write that equation and plug in the unit rate where K was. <coughs> And then the question is always going to ask us to you know, find how many hours it'll take to go this many miles or something like that. And so we're going to plug in for whatever the problem asks us. Okay, so the second one is the unit rate will go in front of the variable. And then the third one is multiply.
from last year. All right, so these three steps, even though I worded it differently on your paper, it's still the same. It's the three steps are not changed. So find the unit rate, we write our equation, and then and like we plug in the value, but essentially we're going to be multiplying the unit rate times that value. That's what we're going to be doing. So I think the examples are still the same, though. Okay. So Melvin purchased eight t-shirts for $64. So we've got to do two things. Write the equation and then answer the question, how much would it cost for 10 t-shirts? So the first thing, we, we, we cannot answer this question until we write the equation. So that's what we're gonna to have to do first. But the first thing that I want us to answer, and this is, goes back to what we've been doing all week long, is what are the two units that make up this relationship? So what two units make up this relationship? Cost and amount of t-shirts. Okay, so cost and t-shirts. And then the second thing that I want us to do, sometimes they're going to tell us what these are. Sometimes they're going to tell us what, um, what the variable is. But what I want us to do now is say, let's use C for cost and T for t-shirts. So those are gonna be our two variables, C for cost and T for t-shirts. One thing about when you write that T, if you write a T like this, what does it look like? plus sign, so make sure there's a little tail at the end of it, so that way you know it's a T, not a plus. Okay, so the next thing we've got to do is start to follow those steps. So number one, find the unit rate. So use what they give us up here. $64 for eight t-shirts. Unit rates, what operation do we use? Division, 64 divided by eight. Eight dollars for one t-shirt. So it's eight dollars for one t-shirt. Second thing is write the equation. So this equation is going to have eight C and T. So you've got to ask yourself, is the cost equal to eight times the number of t-shirts, or is the number of t-shirts equal to eight times the cost? Let's go back up here. How much is the cost? 64. How many t-shirts? Eight. So is it 64 times eight or eight times eight? Eight times eight. So the cost equals eight times the number of t-shirts, because that's what you all just told me. The cost, 64, equals eight times eight. Eight times the number of t-shirts. So that's how that equation works. And then the last thing to do is plug in for this that they give you. Okay, so how much would it cost to produce 10 t-shirts? Well, t-shirts is which letter? T. So we're going to plug in 10 for T. Make it look like that. And then what operation should we do then? There's nothing in between them? Multiply. Multiply. So cost equals 8 times 10. So for 10 t-shirts, we would have to pay So let's look at a couple more. I think it'll make more sense once we start to do more of these. Okay, so this time, if you notice, they're going to tell us what letters we use for each, uh, each unit. So she bought six containers of yogurt for $7.68. Write an equation that relates the cost, which is C, 
to the number of yogurts, which is y. And then we'll answer that question. So step one, though, is still the same. Because they've already told us what the two units are. We don't have to do that. Step one is still the same. Find the unit rate or the unit price. So go back to that project we did with online shopping. Is it 7.68 divided by 6 or 6 divided by 7.68? 7.68 divided by 6. So that's going to be the unit rate. So we got to do 768 divided by 6. We get one dollar and twenty-eight cents. So step two is we're going to plug in the unit rate into that equation. So we've got C for cost and Y for yogurts. So is it cost equals one twenty-eight times number of yogurts? Or is it the number of yogurts is cost times 128? Which one makes sense? This? Or that? Sorry? The top one, yes. The cost would be 6 times 128 is 768. So the cost is going to be the number of yogurts times 160, or 128. So C equals 1.28Y. So then the last thing that we're going to do is plug in 10 for what? For C or for Y? For Y. 10 is number of yogurts. So it's going to be cost equals 128 times 10. And multiplying by 10 there isn't that bad because it's going to be 12.80, yep, $12.80. We've got our equation and we've got our answer there. And if it helps, Write your equation in the, both ways and then ask yourself, okay, which one works for this question? So it might be easier to look at it and see which one works best. Okay, so let's do another one together. Miss Baker paid $2.50 for five pounds of bananas. Write an equation that relates the cost, which is C, to the number of pounds, which is P, of bananas. And then we'll answer that question afterwards. So step one is still the same. What's the unit rate? How, many, how much is it for one pound of bananas? 250 divided by five. So that will get you 50 cents. 50 cents. Okay, step two, we write our equation. We've got C for cost and P for pounds. So I'll do the same thing I did for the last one. Which one of those two makes sense for this question? Charlie? Okay, so let's see if this works. Number of pounds is 5 equal to 250 times 0.5. No, so it would be the top one. Yeah, the cost, the cost is 0.5 times 5. So C equals 0.50 times P. So that was good. What Charlie did, he said, okay, the bottom one works. He looks at it. It doesn't work for the information we have, so it's going to be the top one. So that's a, that was a good way to kind of look and see if that, that is the correct one. So then 8 is going to be plugged in for what? C or P? For P, because 8 is pounds. So we'll do C equals 0.50 times 8. $4, good. 
most of the time, I'm not going to say it always happens, but most of the time, if you're dealing with the cost of something, C, the cost, is going to go before the equal sign. If you notice, for all of ours so far, that's what it is. Usually it's cost equals the, um, the unit rate times the amount. It's almost always the case. Unit rate times the amount. Okay, any questions on doing this? It's the same three steps every time. Find the unit rate, write your equation, plug in the number and multiply. Find the unit rate, write your equation, plug in the number and multiply. All right, go ahead and do the last two then on your own. The last two. Make sure you read this one carefully. What two numbers do you need to divide to find the unit rate? 15 minutes for two pages. 10 doesn't have to do with this yet. So it'll be 15 divided by 2, or 7.5. Then you've got pages and minutes. So you gotta ask yourself which one works. Number of pages is 7.5 times minutes, or minutes is 7.5 times number of pages. The bottom one, because look up here, 15 equals 7.5 times two. And that works for this right here. So M equals 7.5 P. So then we're gonna plug in 10 for P, M equals 7.5 times 10. So how many, how long will it take her to type 10 pages? 75, 75 minutes, yes. Okay, so follow those same three steps. I'll give you a little bit more time to finish the last one.
And when you try to find the unit rate, 1196 divided by four, how much does it cost for one pound of tomatoes then? $2.99. Keep that at 2.99. Don't round it up to three, because that would throw everything off. So keep it at 2.99. The equation, we've got the cost C, the number of pounds. We can use P. So cost would equal 299 times the number of pounds. So that's going to be our equation. And then we're going to have to plug in for 6 and for 10. So we'll have to do C equals 299 times 6, as well as C equals 299 times 10. So for 6 pounds of tomatoes, 299 times 6, that's going to be... 94, good. And then for 10, it'll be 29.90. I would say the trickiest thing is figuring out which letter goes where in the equation. Other than that, we found the unit rate. We know how to multiply two numbers together. So step two is probably the, the hardest thing for this. But the more you practice, the more you're going to be able to see, okay, I'm going to figure out which one works for the information we have, and that'll be our equation. All right, any questions? If not, got these to work on.